This is Wumbo Maiko, and I wanted to talk today about recombinations. In this video, you'll see me working on a recombination kit. I'm still sort of developing these kits to make them as easy as possible to do at home. But the baseline kit is totally usable, and so long as you provide something to heat shock with, such as a sous vide or um, some seed heating mats, you can get a little creative. All you need to do is raise the temperature to 107 degrees for a short amount of time, and um, other than that, everything else for the kit is provided. My goal with these kits are to allow the breeding of fungi through mono-mono, di-mono, and di-di mating all through the same process. This kit will increase the success rate on all three of these types of crosses, making die-die crossing specifically a lot easier. I have in-depth instructions on my Patreon on how to use these kits as well as what each ingredient in them does. I will link the Patreon in my description and, and you can find it at www.patreon.com Wumbo Myco. That's W-U-M-B-O-M-Y-C-O. It's important that your station is very clean when you first start this process. Get your mycelium ready. If you're using liquid cultures, this process is a lot faster. But for plates, you just want to sort of scrape the mycelium off of the plate with the least amount of agar on it as possible. Here you can sort of see that I'm trying to get the mycelium into these little 1.5 milliliter microcentrifuge tubes without touching the outside of the tube. I want the blade of the scalpel to only touch the inside of each tube. That way it stays clean. After I sort of methodically add each strain into each microcentrifuge tube. Um, I tap the mycelium, I tap on the tubes so that the mycelium will fall down sort of near the bottom of the tubes. I just want to do the best you can to uh, just try and knock everything down towards the bottom. And now I'm adding just a tiny bit, a couple of drops, um, no more than half a milliliter of uh, antibiotic liquid culture. Now for this step you can also use sterile distilled water, um, but I already had this in syringes. And this is just going to help you sort of um, mix together the two samples. I actually prefer doing this after the pestle, the macer or the um, I actually prefer doing this after using the pestle on each tube, um, but I I just sort of forgot and uh, did this one first. It doesn't really matter, <clears throat> but using the pestle before adding in your liquids will help you not um, spill any liquids anywhere. The use of the pestle as well is um, to really homogenize the mycelium. You want as many connection points between the two samples of mycelium as possible. And so that's why you don't have to pestle the um, when you're using liquid culture as your samples. Uh, because the liquid culture already has a ton of ton of points of uh, contact once you mix them together. Um, and can be easily vortexed together. Whereas plate mycelium is much more, um, how do I say this, uh, solid of, of a single unit, um, even though it has just as many high feet, high vol tips, um, you are going to need to sort of mash them together in order to get all of those uh, hyphae to touch. Now here I'm adding all of my buffer solution into each tube. Um, 
the kit comes with one milliliter of buffer solution and each tube requires half a milliliter of buffer solution so I can do two reactions per buffer solution container. After filling them up with the buffer solution I am going to subject them to the cold shock phase. Now, after filling all of the microcentrifuge tubes up with buffer, I am now going into the cold shock phase, allowing the, the tubes to get cold on a plate of ice. Um, after that phase, I take it off of the plate of ice, place it in front of your flow hood so that you can work again. And here you see that I'm doing the pestle phase, a phase in which I could have accomplished before putting the liquids in, and I think would have had would have been a little less of a hassle. Now as I'm mixing these tubes up, I'm ensuring that I do not cross-contaminate each one with a pestle that's been uh, with a different set of strains. So you can use the pestle for more than one tube so long as it's the same cross-attempt, um, but uh, if it contains different strains, then do not use it. As I take the pestle out of the tube, I sort of scrape it, the tip of it on the sides to make sure that I'm not pulling out any mycelium. This here is a makeup vortexer. It's a cheap version of a lab tool that's used to uh, vortex these tubes um, to mix things up. Uh, you can buy these for cosmetics for like 60 to 80 bucks, something like that. <clears throat> Very affordable and they work fantastically well for mixing things up. So now that, that all of my tubes underwent the cold shock phase, I'm just making sure that they're well mixed up. I place them into this dry block incubator and now here you can see the incubator is slowly heating up. This is in five times fast forward, so it is going quite a lot slower than this in reality. Um, but once it reaches the optimal temperature, it will hold it for the optimal time and then turn off. Um, for this reaction, I'm using 107 degrees Fahrenheit as my target temperature, and I'm reaching that temperature for about 30, for about 90 seconds. After the 90 second heat shock phase, you let it cool down and then dump your tubes into the bioreaction tubes. So you take the little microcentrifuge tube with your sample, open it up, take your bioreaction tube, open it up, and dump it in there. Um, <clears throat> I did this beforehand off camera, um, but you can do it before or after, and that's taking your syringe full of antibiotic liquid culture and placing uh, five to six milliliters of that syringe worth of liquid culture into the bioreaction tube. That is the antibiotic liquid culture that your samples will then grow in and mature in and that the reaction will sort of um, <clears throat> finalize. 
The bio reaction tube is a 15 milliliter tube with an air filter on top to allow it to respirate over the week long incubation period. Your samples after going inside of this tube will incubate for one week at room temperature up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Try not to let it go above that, otherwise it might shock the cells again. 